Welcome. Hi. Welcome. Thank Thanks for having us. <laughs> Thank you for being here. Is what do you have in your head, Michael? Yeah, that's a nice hat, Michael. It's, <laughs> it's my llama hat. I'm also known as the Zamo Llama. So that's uh, right. So yeah. uh, but I knew that. I was just wanting you to introduce yourself as the Zamo Llama. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we, we have we have an intro slide as part of our deck. So if we're ready to go, I think we can get started. Yeah, we can get started. So uh, let's see. You are starting, Michael, if I remember. So I'm yeah, yeah, we'll here. introduce ourselves and, uh, and get going here. Excellent. So, we'll yeah. <laughs> All right. Thanks. Thanks for the introduction. So, uh, again, welcome. We're at, here to talk about how the Community Toolkit streamlines development of Microsoft built apps and your apps alike. Uh, my name is Michael A. Hawker, also known as the Zamo Llama. That's that's why I have the hat. I am a uh, senior software engineer here at Microsoft, and I maintain the Windows Community Toolkit, which is something we're going to be talking about a lot during this session. And I also created an app called XAML Studio, which helps you rapidly prototype ideas and try them out before you put them into your app. And here with me today is Justin. Well, hi, everyone. I'm so excited to be here today. Uh, my name is Justin. I'm an engineer manager at Microsoft. And my team is responsible for building the new Microsoft Store app on Windows 11. As a developer and designer myself, I just love spending the time thinking about ideas and eventually, hopefully, implementing them. Um, I do not have a llama hat, but I do have two beautiful girls uh, who got me up early every morning, like an alarm clock. <laughs> OK, back to you, Michael. Thanks, Justin. Well, well, we'll hear from you more in a little bit. Uh, so this is overview for our, our slides today uh, We're uh, and demos. We're going to be talking a little bit about what the community toolkits are, but really jump right into a demo and show you the Windows Community Toolkit in action so you can really understand the power that these toolkits give you when building applications. Uh, in this case, we're going to be uh, building a WinUI 3 app in Visual Studio 2022 today. Uh, I'll talk a little bit more then about what the Windows Community Toolkit is. Uh, and Justin's going to share a story and tell, um, tell you all about how the Microsoft Store app has been built uh, with toolkit components and how we're working together moving forward to um, really see, see a lot of great success in how we're building applications here at Microsoft and, and how these toolkit components can help you build great apps uh, on your own as well. And then finally, end with some more demos and show some really cool animation stuff. Um, so uh, stick around to, to see that as well. So the Community Toolkits are a set of libraries uh, that are all based around .NET technologies. We're all open sourced up on GitHub, part of the .NET Foundation and MIT licensed. Uh, you can go to our GitHub organization at aka.ms slash toolkit. And we're really trying to foster collaboration between our community of developers, our Microsoft MVPs, Microsoft engineers like myself that are uh, running and building these toolkits with everyone in the open, uh, as well as the, the teams that are building these .NET technologies technologies. And we really want to work with them and provide the feedback that we're getting from the community and um, figuring out how all these great things that we're building with them can improve the platform in the future. We'll talk a little bit more about that in a bit. And it's really thanks to all these uh, Contrib contributors that we've had. Uh, we've had hundreds of developers in our GitHub organization contributing to these projects, um, making really cool experiences and features, providing feedback and issues, trying things out, helping us with documentation. Uh, every little bit helps and really helps enrich these toolkits and makes them better for everyone and all the app developers out there that are building .NET applications. So uh, big, big hand to everyone for uh, contributing with us. It's really awesome to, to work with you all. And so I'm just going to dive right into a sample app and uh, and uh, to our sample app for the Windows Community Toolkit specifically, and show you how you can use it to start bootstrapping uh, an application. And so you can download this through the Microsoft Store. Uh, it's available at aka.ms slash Windows Toolkit app. And don't worry, I'll have all the links at the end of the presentation as well for you to grab uh, then. Uh, oops. So I'm going to switch over to the Toolkit sample app here that I downloaded in the store. It's really a playground app. It shows you, uh, as a developer, all the different controls and experiences you might want to be uh, using, just like the XAML Controls Gallery app does for the platform. This one's specific to our Windows Community Toolkit. So if you were building you know, some sort of media app and you needed an eyedropper, we have a control here that can help you with that, easily pick out a pixel from an image and get the right color that you need. Uh, so really easy to, to kind of bootstrap whatever experience you're looking to develop. 
One of the new controls that I really like that we shipped in our last version was this constrained box control. And this actually came with a collaboration with Justin's team in the store. And you can see we actually have a live XAML editor here in the sample app. So I can actually edit, start editing the sample and playing with this control and experience right away and trying to understand what it does, how it works. So if I change this aspect ratio field here, we can see, oh, this image is now in this 16 by 9 aspect ratio. And so what's really cool about this control is like regardless of the size of the viewport here, it maintains the aspect ratio of this image for me automatically. So now it's it's locked in at 16 by 9 aspect ratio. And if I you know put another constraint in here, like a max width, um, then it's going to make sure that that image, you know, maybe I want this centered. Right, so now, now this image is is where I want it to be, and it's not going to be larger than I want it to be. But if I am I, if I'm on a smaller device and I have a whole bunch of these, it can shrink down if needed as well. And uh, so I can really kind of craft and play around with this in our sample app and figure out how I want to build and use this control before I put it in my app. Um, so now I can just copy this code and let's dive in over to Visual Studio so that we can actually see how this is used within our application um, and 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 helps helps us get started. So I've downloaded Visual Studio 2022 here. I've uh, also downloaded the Windows App SDK uh, extension. So that lets me build this new WinUI 3 app. And I've gone over here, right-clicked, and gone to Manage NuGet Packages. And this is how I can pull in those community toolkit libraries from NuGet. So you can see I have our animations package, behaviors, controls, where the constrained box is, and our media package. These are all things I'm going to be showing you how to use here quickly today. Uh, and so the, all of our packages start here with Community Toolkit. And then we have got .winui, because this is related to our WinUI 3 uh, UI framework here we're building with today. And then the only other thing I've done to this project is add in that image of Seattle that I was using from our sample app. So that's available to us here. Um, and so now I can paste in our, our control and, and get my app building here. And uh, if you don't have the XAML namespace, Visual Studio will pop in a light bulb to help you add that automatically. I've added all the ones we're going to use today up ahead just to save us a little bit of time. Uh, but uh, otherwise, this is basically just a file new project. I didn't didn't do anything else special to this, this outside of adding the NuGet packages and including those XAML namespaces ahead of time just to save us save us a few seconds of uh, of typing. And so now you can see Visual Studio 2022 is really snappy. That's what I've been really enjoying about it. We've got our uh, WinUI desktop app here with our toolkit component and that same image. Now, if I shrink down this application, we can see that, yep, it's maintaining that same 16 by 9 aspect ratio. But uh, you know what I think could improve this app a little bit, Justin, is a really fancy shadow. Don't you agree? Oh, yeah. <laughs> uh, this is actually another feature that uh, we developed with the store. Uh, they were building and adding shadows to the store app. And Justin will talk a little bit more about that later. But uh, we, we thought it would make a great addition to the toolkit. And so we actually have that in our sample application here, too. I can search for shadow. And we had our drop shadow panel in the past that was really powerful, really excited a lot of developers. Um, but you had to change your layout to use it. So it was, you couldn't really kind of add it after the fact as you were designing and polishing things up. And that's where these attached shadows really make a big difference and, and the was power that we leveraged working with the store team to, to add this to the cool toolkit and really make it simpler than ever to add shadows to your application. So this attached card shadow, we can go over to the XAML, see how it works. One of the really powerful things about it is you can actually add it into your resource dictionary as a common resource so that you can share it easily across multiple components and have that consistent styling within your app. You can even use it in a style, uh, for instance, like these buttons here. So both of our buttons on our page can share the same style for this shadow. And if I want to, I can also just apply it to any any single uh, element as well. So for instance, I've done that on this rectangle. And that's the example I'm going to grab here. So I can just copy this easily into our app and add it to our existing control. So I'm back in Visual Studio now. I've added that attached uh, card shadow. I've done that by using this effects.shadow attached property with uh, on our constrained box control. And then it just has all the properties about how we want to define, uh, define the shadow. And you can see already I had hit uh, run. Visual Studio is building my app. It's deploying it now. It's going to pop up on my other screen here. So I'll bring that over. And here we have our shadow. That's awesome. Except, oh, you know, there's these extra corner radius here. What did I do? Let me uh, let me switch back over to uh, Visual Studio here and see. It's like, oh, yeah, I grabbed this extra corner radius property from the sample. That was in the sample, but we don't need it in our app here because, of course, our image is, is square. Uh, so I'm just going to remove that. And of course, now my window is behind Visual Studio. 
Uh, but one of the really awesome things in Visual Studio 2022 is this XAML Live preview. And so I can drop this pane over here, and it gives me a real-time image preview of my app running. So even though you know if I'm on a laptop and only have a single monitor and my app is now running behind Visual Studio, I can still just uh, really ease my development here and pull in the background. So now if I want to change that offset of that shadow, really have it pop a bit more, I can do that. You know, But that's a little bit dark. So I'm going to change my opacity here now as well. I'm like, oh, that's going to be perfect. I can go back to my app and see now we've really got this nice uh, main aspect ratio maintained image with this amazing shadow. And so there's just kind of gives you an idea of you know how you can start building and compositing these little bits of samples together as you're building out an experience in your app um, and leverage the, the toolkit and our sample app to do that. So let's, let's talk a little bit more about our toolkits and then find out how Justin's using that in the store as well. So we actually have a variety of different toolkits for different technologies. So I've been, of course, showing the Windows Community Toolkit, and we have what we call our Identity and Graph Toolkit within that that has helpers for doing authentication and connecting to the Microsoft Graph. So if you wanted to, for instance, uh, sync documents and settings to OneDrive and share that, that data across uh, a user's devices so they have a consistent experience with your app, you can do that there. We make it super simple, and we have some samples for that as well. We have our .NET Community Toolkit, which I'll talk about in a second. And then we've also been pairing with our uh, Xamarin and Maui Community Toolkit community. And they're now doing the Maui Community Toolkit development with us in our Community Toolkit org. So we can share our resources, bring our communities together more closely, and really have a consistent way of contributing to these toolkits across our whole organization. So if you're working on one project or another, you can come join us on GitHub and, and know how to start uh, contributing to any one of our projects or start contributing between them as well. And so I'm happy to announce today that we've released our .NET Community Toolkit as its own rep repository up on GitHub. It used to be part of our Windows Community Toolkit project, but it's really libraries and tools that are meant for all .NET developers. And so now it has its own home up on GitHub in our uh, organization that you can come to and um, help us build it out and, and make and, and really build great things for everyone there. Uh, and what's really special about the .NET Community Toolkit is it's agnostic of whatever UX framework you might be using. So whether you're using WPF or MAUI or UWP or UNO or uh, Xamarin or Blazor, WinUI 3, whatever you might be using, um, you, the .NET Community Toolkit is going to have helpers that are meant, meant for you. Like you can build on your backend with our MVVM toolkit and your view models in a uh, UX agnostic way, and especially if you're going to be targeting multiple UI platforms, that can be really helpful. It has performance helpers. So if you're really trying to eke out all those things, you can do that as well. Um, and they're all platform and runtime independent. So if you're doing anything with .NET, it's going to be targeting .NET standard 2.0 and run on the runtimes, of course, as well as with .NET 5 and, of course, the recently released .NET 6. Um, and and if you're running on those newer uh, runtimes, then the toolkit's automatically going to ha handle optimizations for you. So you don't have to worry about that. And so it's going to work the best it can wherever you're building your apps. And so you can find that at aka.ms slash toolkit slash .net. That's its new home. And so we hope to see you there to communicate with us. And so. I've been talking about the Windows Community Toolkit. That's the rest of what we're going to be talking about here today as well. As you saw, it's a suite of controls, extensions, and helpers for uh, .NET developers doing work on Windows. We have both UWP versions and versions that work with the Windows App SDK for WinUI 3. And so if you're doing anything with either of those frameworks, we have controls that are working. And as you saw, I took from our UWP sample app, pasted that code into our Win WinUI 3 app, and it just worked. It's really just some namespace changes in our packages that are different, um, but it's going to make it really easy if you're a UWP developer migrating in the future as well. Um, so really excited about that. That's really one of the great stories we have with our community toolkit is that we have a lot of great controls that were built by the community. And as I said, we, we work closely with the platform teams as well, and we've provided feedback and input. And some of those controls have actually now ended up in the WinUI library of controls. So we had our menu, our in-app notification, radio progress bar. These were features that were created by our contributors, Ibrahim, uh, Alberto, David, that are now part of the WinUI library. Uh, so it's really exciting to see the story of, of how we can work together, experiment, try new ideas out, and then see improvements in the platform later. And then also now, we're making use of those things within our own apps at Microsoft. And Justin's going to sh share the story of how that uh, has been done with the Microsoft Store app. Take it away, Justin. OK, thank you so much, Michael. And uh, that was really, really cool. Um, so as some of you might already know, we completely revamped the store experience on Windows 11. During our planning phase, one of our goals was to create a delightful and intuitive experience for our users when they browse through the contents within the store. 
And to be able to do that, we would want the store to be responsive, to have meaningful animations and transitions that can guide our users throughout their journey, and at the same time, easy for us to implement from an engineering point of view. And this is one of the reasons that why we pick the toolkit animations. If you are familiar with the Windows Composition API, you know that although it's super powerful and opens up a lot of opportunities on the visual layer, it might not be the easiest thing to work with sometimes. And you might end up writing a lot of code. But with the help from the, uh, the toolkit animations, however, powerful 60 frame per second animations can be written on XAML directly, like what Michael just showed you, or purely in C Sharp, if, if you prefer that way, both in a much simplified, easy to use fashion. In fact, more than 95% of the animations that you see in the store app today are powered by the toolkit animations. Now, let me show you some end results from the store app. And the first one is what we call the spotlight section. When we browse through the contents in this carousel, we apply a crossfade animation on the hero images. And we also have these staggered opacity and offset animations on the text and the button, just to make them stand out a little bit more. We achieved all these just with a few lines of code using the Animation Builder API from the Toolkit animations. And in this example, we wanted to make sure that a user never loses context of where they are during the transitions between pages. Not only did we use the native connected animation API, we also created more than a dozen coordinate animations using Toolkit implicit animations API to help enhance the navigation experience. And also, if you resize the app, you'll see the panels smoothly resize and reflow to the new locations. We did this with just a few lines of code from Toolkit Animation API as well. And the last example is actually my personal favorite. As you can see, when we scroll up or down on the detail page, we move the big buy box into a smaller sticky header that still preserves key information for us to take actions. Although it may look to you like we're animating the same control, it's actually an illusion. Behind the scenes, we create a helper using Animation Builder from the toolkit that handles the in-between animations for position, size, opacity, and more. So all we have to do is connect these elements, and the helper will take care of the rest. And this is just another great example that showcases how we can maintain context and provide continuity between views. Um, it's just so cool to try out all the goodness from the toolkits. But at the same time, it's also important for us to contribute back to the community when we think what we build can be beneficial for other developers too. And that's why I really like this little helper here that we built, because we already opened up a PR in the toolkit repo. So soon, you'll be able to try and build similar experiences on your application too. And that's all I wanted to show you today. Thank you all. And now back to you, Michael. Thanks, Justin. It's really been amazing working with your team and adding things like the constraint box and the attached shadows into the toolkit. And I'm really looking forward to working with your team again to put in those transition helpers into the toolkit in a future release. Um, it's super exciting stuff. As you said, the PR is up on GitHub, so uh, people can even try these things and give us feedback on them uh, before they before they go into the toolkit. Um, it's it's really amazing just what what we've been able to do with the community and how that can not only help um, you know, our own uh, applications uh, you know, streamline their development, but also help all of our uh, developers in the .NET community build their applications as well. And it's amazing to see these things come into the toolkit and, and, and working just all together. Uh, so yeah, as you can see, the uh, Microsoft Store has been using a lot of different toolkit features. Uh, the clock uh, application as well is using uh, features from the toolkit. So if you haven't checked out their new focus time feature, uh, it's really cool. It lets you um, really kind of set, set parameters and time and select and integrate with Microsoft to do to check, say, this is the task I want to get done during this time. And they use the authentication helper from the toolkit to help connect uh, and log into the Microsoft Graph to, to, to do that connection. So we're really excited about that. Uh, and working with other apps at Microsoft using a whole bunch of different toolkit components. There's really something, as you can see on the slide, for everyone. If you're building an app, if you need a different layout component or some sort of helper to accomplish some sort of goal, check in one of our toolkits first. Chances are there's something here that's going to help you along your way if you're a .NET developer to, to bootstrap your development process. 
Uh, and so with that, you know, Justin, you're showing those awesome animations. Let's jump into a demo uh, with our toolkit sample app again and show you how you can actually get started today with those animations as well. So I'm going to jump back over to our sample app. We have a whole uh, tab here dedicated to animations. We have things uh, that can get you know more complex with blurs and uh, composition if you want, but you know still all just driven by XAML over here. Uh, and I'm going to start a little bit simpler though. I'm going to go go to our start animation activity, and this lets uh, me just here click a button, move it down, have this image here in the middle fade out here in a second. There it goes, um, and just really simple to get started. As Justin said, uh, you can do this with C sharp. I'm the XAML llama, though. I like to use this in XAML. Uh, a lot of our examples in the uh, toolkit sample app are in XAML. So I'm just going to start by copying this animation piece over into our app. And I'm just going to add it here as a, a catch property again. So we have our explicit animations. And here's our move animation. I've set it here to be sequential. So it's going to run these one by one rather than starting them all at the same time. And uh, we can see it references the fade out and fade in animations as well. So let me make sure I copy those uh, over at the same time as well. Uh, oop, I just need the inner animations. And so what you can kind of see there is we were animating both the button and the image in the sample app, but I'm just going to animate the same thing here. And what's kind of cool about these animations is you can kind of separate them out. You can put them in resources. You really have a lot of flexibility about how you set all this stuff up. Uh, and then what I'm going to do is I'm going to add a button and set its content here to click me. And let's make its uh, background blue so we can see it. Uh, and uh, we're going to have this button trigger animation. So to do that, if you're familiar from WPF or even in UWP and WinUI, you have access to the behavior uh, library. And the XAML behaviors really make it easier to connect stuff uh, into XAML. So in this case, we're going to use it to connect a click event from the button uh, to trigger our behavior that's uh, specific to the toolkit. So this is our start animation action. So it's a behavior that knows how to start our animations. And so now with this in here, we're just going to be able to click this button and trigger this animation that should hopefully move down our image, fade it out, fade it in, and then move it back up. Um, so you know, very easy to start quickly building these different little bits and bobs from our sample app into our, our application and start building these rich experiences. Um, and like you, you've seen, the, like the Microsoft Store has been doing. And so now my app is running again. Uh, let me grab that from my other monitor and pull that over here. And so now we can click this, and voila, our image moves down. Just nice, smooth transition. And then it will start to fade away. Whoosh, it's magic, right? Uh, really exciting stuff. It'll come back into to focus and pop back up. And so now you know we've very easily taken a few lines of XAML from our sample app put that all together within our app and started like building one of these richer experiences uh, just with little bits of pieces over time. Uh, so there's a lot more stuff in the sample app. As Justin said, uh, they use a lot of implicit animations in the store as well. These make it really easy to uh, do these visual transitions when things move around or uh, pop in and out of uh, visibility. And so you know, come download the sample app, try out, look at all these different brushes and extensions, and of course, all the controls and experiences we have, like our identity and graph helper controls here as well that I've mentioned earlier. It's all here in the sample app for you to try out and see how it can work and improve your applications in the future. And so that's the, the main stuff that we wanted to talk about here today. And uh, appreciate you, and thank you for joining. We have time for questions. So you can share that with the hashtag .NET conf. Uh, tag on Twitter, and here are all the links that I mentioned. Uh, here are all the links that I mentioned again uh, for uh, our toolkit locations. We also have our um, a channel on the UWP Community Discord server, so that's at aka.ms/wct/discord. So we always enjoy talking to our community. And if you are on Twitter, you can also use the hashtag Community Toolkit and hashtag Windows Community Toolkit tags to share with what you uh, to share with us what you're doing and working on. We always really love seeing what the community is building and working on. And and uh, you know, and you can come join us up on GitHub to contribute to these projects and and help improve them for everyone. If it's you know, provide f filing an issue, trying out a new feature, you know, working to improve our docs, every little bit helps um, build these great experiences for everyone um, at, at, as as a, as a community. Perfect. I just want to make sure we had everything set up. I see you, you all were done. <laughs> <laughs> I think we started earlier and, and finally on time. And so I'm like super excited. <laughs> hey, you know, well, this is the hardest part of doing a session in .NET Conf is like, 
keeping we, everything keep, like on time and yeah i mean it's funny because even hanselman said on monday it was like it's like a telethon that's literally what it is we have a show after a show after a show for three days for days <laughs> <laughs> so but, great job yeah but we, so we do have a, a we have a question and we have a praise so you, you want to take it away jamie yeah. Um, so Jeremy actually says the store app is so beautiful for real. And guess what? The store app is using the toolkits. Yay. <laughs> Thank you, Jeremy. Thank you. Thanks, Jeremy. Yeah, the, the, the animation, I mean, it's it's something that looks so subtle, right? And, and straightforward, but that takes a lot of work to make it to make it that smooth and make it look that good. And it's great that you take all you took all of that and put it into the toolkit. So now everybody can benefit from it. And even uh, products from Microsoft are benefiting. So it's not just like, oh, we did this for you. It's like, no, we're doing this for ourselves. <laughs> for everyone. For everybody. For everyone. Oh, exactly. For everyone. <laughs> <laughs> oh, oh, I think we have another question, though. Yep. Uh, so Jose Silva asks, Michael and Justin, are there, <laughs> directly for you, <laughs> are there plans to support MBU uh, pattern in the community toolkit? Uh, that that's a great question. Uh, I didn't actually expect to get a question like this, so this is awesome. Um, but uh, but yeah, uh, right now uh, our main focus has been on the MVVM toolkit. We just shipped that this past year with the help of our community. We had so many people uh, come together and give us feedback before it was even released, um, and so that that's part of our .NET community toolkit now, which we've separated out into its own repo. Um, I know the platform teams are also thinking about MVU for like Maui and for WinUI three and what what's going on there. I know they have issues open tracking those, um, so we haven't really thought too much about what we could do there in that space with the community toolkit yet. Um, we're kind of waiting to see what the platforms do and talking to them and figuring out what their plans are. Um, but you know that that's the beauty of the community toolkit is it's a place where we can experiment and try new things. And so if you know community members are passionate about this space and figuring out the MVU pattern and you know needing some help with that with certain technologies, you know, open an issue on one of our community toolkit repos, you know, put a plan together, talk about what you could see, where there could be benefit and how we could you know, add on and complement what's already in the platform. That's really the best way to get started. Just start a conversation um, with us up on GitHub in our discussions uh, on one of our repos, um, and and we'll take it from there. You know, if, if if it makes sense, if it lines up, if if there's people that are excited about it, then you know we can help you in the community bring it forward from an idea into something that now you know could be part of uh, an, an app at Microsoft. Great. So you're looking for collaboration and uh, connections there. And obviously, the more the merrier, right? The more so the merrier. Yeah. The, yep. the, yep. more, the <laughs> more people are willing to contribute, the more everybody wins. It's not just individuals or individual apps. And there's that's the beautiful thing about a toolkit. It, yep. it is a kit of tools. What? It's like the word <laughs> describes what it is. <laughs> exactly. I mean, that's the thing I love about open source, right, is, is everything that we can do up there together. You know, it's not just helping you and the app that you're building, but it's going to you know, help the next, you know, 10, hundreds, you know, thousands of developers after you that are trying to do that same thing, right? You know, how many times have you come across that forum post in the past? It's like, you know, I'm having this trouble. And then 10 minutes later, they're like, oh, yeah, I figured it out. But they didn't say what they actually fixed, right? Imagine if that's now, you know, some solution that is you know, contributed to an open source project, part of one of our toolkits. Now, you know, everyone can have that solution and and not, you know, go through that pain again. <laughs> exactly, exactly. Actually, we do have one more question. I was just waiting to to ask it. Um, you want to go ahead, and Jamie? Oh, sure. Yeah. Um, can we choose the process? I'm sorry. Can we choose to process the animation in GPU or CPU? Do you want to take that one, Justin? Um, I do not think you get to choose that. I please, I'm pretty sure like if you do have a GPU, uh, it's just going to run on that. Um, right. So yeah, that, 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 yeah. That's what I think as well is basically uh, the XAML kind of optimizes that already. Um, right. And I, I know by default, the animations in the toolkit use the composition layer, which should default to the GPU uh, if, if the one's available. Um, and then if not, you can also choose to swap to the XAML layer. Um, but I believe that will still try to use the GPU if it's available. But I know the composition layer is generally more performant. Um, 
I, I'm sure one of our experts uh, who's listening <laughs> can can chime in on Twitter and and give the actual correct, technically correct response of okay. of how this works. <laughs> but but even something like this, it's a simple. I don't even have to worry about it. It's like, do I go right. to a GPU? Do I go to CPU? It's just more like, here's my code. It's automatic. And you know, let just you take the wheel, <laughs> right? I don't have exactly. That, that's why I love XAML and why I really always excited and passionate about thinking about how we can take these very complex things like animations and expose them in a way that really distills it down into a way that's easy for anyone to understand and kind of abstract some of those harder questions around. Like, you know, great if you can dig down to that layer and need those details and, you know, exposing APIs for that is always great too. But like, I really want to think like square one. Before we had animations in the toolkit, I was like, XAML animations like they're super complicated and messy. I didn't understand. Now I can like actually go in and paste these animation examples together and feel like I actually know what I'm doing. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and I would also ask, uh, why would you actually want animation to run on CPU, right? Like GPU is designed for that. So right. as well, yeah. Yeah. Well, I think it's it's important for people to know that hey, we've uh, people have made these optimizations for you for a reason. Not because they don't want you to do it. It's just like stuff like that is I'm using a toolkit or a tool because it's making my job easier. Mm -hmm. yeah. Not necessarily, you know, doing something from the ground up. Yeah. So and another thing is um, mm -hmm. uh, by using the toolkit animations, you're literally using the witness composition API behind the scenes. That's guaranteed for you to have six frame per second you know, the, this highly performant animations, visuals, yeah, you get everything for free. You don't actually need to worry about this. Yeah. Oh, perfect. Yeah. Which is the, I, I just love that. Don't worry about it. Yeah. So worry free. <laughs> That's right. I wish slides were more like that. <laughs> yeah. If only everything was as simple as pasting some XAML into our That's app to get right. something. Exactly. Like that. Just, just put some XAML around and everything will be fine. Don't worry about it. <laughs> well, we're right on time. Yes. So. Thank you so much, Justin and Michael. That was amazing. We loved that. Uh, thank you for joining us uh, yeah. on the stream. This is great. Thanks for having us so much. This was okay. awesome. Thanks, Thanks, for having Thanks, so much. Thanks, Perfect. And Thanks, Justin, again.